Hey there, everyone. We've got, oh, wait a minute, that's not right. So what we have today is, I'm not in class. We've got the kids that are missing nickels. So I wanna talk just a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today. We've got a, a short video lesson to start things off. And then uh, we'll be looking at uh, a couple pages in the packet and then you can either work on your lab or your web assign, which is due in the next, uh, the lab is, I think, due next class, and the web assign will be due a few classes after that. You can see the details on the agenda. That stuff will be posted in there, as well as I'll have a little write-up for today. But uh, just kind of wanted to give you an overview there before we get started. Now, for this video, we'll be taking a look at uh, energy some more, as we've been talking about it, but two specific ways that we're going to use to talk about it are these uh, flow diagrams and energy bar charts, which we can see up here. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about work and uh, a different kind of energy. We're going to add some details to our uh, most important chart that we've got here. And so just a thing to look at, um, we're going to add onto the chart. We're not going to fill this in right now, but um, I want you to just kind of have that somewhere handy so that you can fill in as we as we go through. But for the next few slides, I'm just gonna explain stuff and I want you to listen. You don't necessarily have to take notes on this. I would suggest sort of waiting until I get to this slide again and I'll fill everything in for you. And so uh, that's the plan for right now. So what we're gonna talk about first is work. And this doesn't go on the table, but it's gonna go underneath. And Work is something that we talk about in physics. It has something to do with energy. Most specifically, it's the energy transferred to or from an object by applying a force along a path, along a distance. Um, and work can be positive or negative. We can add energy or we can remove energy. I think you can think about that. If you push a block in the direction it's moving, it'll speed up. If you pull a block in the opposite direction that it's moving, it's gonna slow down or um, so if that's, that's sort of the idea with that. And just like all of our rest for energy, uh, we measure energy in joules and work is also measured in joules. We've got a couple equations that we'll use for work. Um, it's work, W, is equal to force times distance. So if we apply a force to something over a distance, then that'll be um, the work done. That's why the area underneath the force versus distance graph that we made in our previous lab was equal to the energy stored in the spring because that's the work that's done. Or <clears throat> it's equal to the change in energy. The work is equal to the change in energy. These two things are the definitions that we're gonna use or our equations that we're gonna use for work. Now, another thing that we're gonna talk a little bit about is power. And you've probably talked about or thought about power for like a car or something like that is about how powerful it is. And it has to do with energy as well, but more specifically, it has to do with the rate that energy is added or removed from a system. So if something is very powerful, it can add energy very quickly. It's not about the total amount of energy, it's about how quickly the energy is added or removed. And so this is measured in joules per second, which is also known as watts. And so if you've thought about like a light bulb that's 40 watts or 60 watts, that's what it means. Uh, it's talking about the amount of energy that the light bulb or appliance uses per second. And a microwave could use like 1500 watts, um, but a light bulb would be in the range of like 20 to 60 or 80 watts, something like that. And so that's the number of joules it uses per second as it's on. Now, we said that the unit here is watts. So if somebody asks you, watt is the unit of power, then you should respond, yes, because it is the unit of power. That's a joke. Because watt is the unit of power. Or you could just say watt, I guess, as well. All right, power equations. We've got two equations for this as well. Uh, the one is that it's just the work done over time. Power is equal to the work over time. Or alternately, you could say that this is equal to the change in energy over time, because that's the other definition for work. So we just have two equations for this as well, but they're basically the same thing. And then the last one we're gonna talk about is one more type of energy that we're gonna to add to our chart. And then after this, we're gonna look at some bar charts, different ways to describe energy. But one last type of energy to add to our chart happens to be, well, if you've got a car that's driving along, it has a lot of kinetic energy. And if you stop the car, where does that energy go? 
I think we've talked about this a little. Um, we said that, well, there's some friction. And friction slows it down, and friction generates heat energy. Like if you rub your hands together, they get warm because friction generates heat. But where does that heat energy go? It goes into the environment all around you. Everything gets warmer. Like the surface it's sliding across gets warmer. Or if it hits like air resistance, the air starts moving around a little bit faster, which it means that something is warmer. And so it warms up. And so this is the general idea. We'll have heat energy as a new type of energy that we'll add to the table. So now is the moment where you should uh, pause the video at the next, once I go to the next slide, because the next slide is going to be uh, what I would like you to fill in on your charts. So I'll switch over to that now and I'll get out of your way and I'll leave it there for a few seconds so that you can pause and copy this down into your notes. <clears throat> Here it is for you. Oh, and I guess I could kind of just describe a little bit about up here as well. So with Q, Q is the abbreviation we use for heat. Um, you'll see that more next year in chemistry. Uh, heat energy, we're going to get the equation next unit. It's stored in the environment. And you gain heat energy from friction. Or if something just stops or runs into something, then that energy is usually going into heat. And then for the other ones, those I think we mostly explained already. So uh, I think we're good there. All right, hopefully you paused, wrote that down. Um, I'll Maybe I'll post these as well, but you can add that to your chart. We might have one more row underneath this chart at some point, but um, this is what we've got for now. I think it's mostly done. <clears throat> All right, and so we've been talking a little bit about energy and where the energy goes. It can be transferred from one type to another. It can move between containers, but the total amount of energy stays the same. And so we want to follow the energy from one spot to another spot, and like what container is it in? This ABC, that's not really anything important, but I'm just sort of saying well, you can follow the path that the energy takes from one location to another. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to learn about two tools that we can use to measure or follow the energy from one place to another. First one is the simpler one. It's called an energy flow diagram. And so we show where the energy goes throughout an object's motion. So if something's moving and then it's up high, it'll be going from one type of energy to another type of energy. And so what we do is we draw boxes for the containers and arrows to show the flow of energy. So here's sort of my <clears throat> generic example. If we have here like a first container and a second container and a third container, and then the energy's going from the first container into the second two containers there. And so just a, a quick example. Now, you don't have to draw that one, but I'm going to show you uh, some examples with real world examples, and we'll, we'll talk through where the energy goes in those examples. So here's one example for you. All right, a box slides down a rough ramp starting from rest. Draw an energy flow diagram for the box at the top of the ramp, halfway down the ramp, and when it's stopped at the bottom. So those are our three instants that we care about. And so I'll draw a picture of what this is just because that'll help me visualize what's going on. At A, it's stopped at the top, it's at rest. At B, it's sliding down the ramp, and then at C, it's stopped. <coughs> And so we're going to look through and think about what kinds of energy does it have at each of these locations. And hopefully you can agree with me that at position A, it has energy in the gravitational field. And that type of energy is going to be gravitational potential energy. And then at point B, well, think about it for a second and see if you can come up with what energy it has there. You can pause the video if you want, or think about the types of energy it might have at this location. Well, I think that there are three different types of energy here. So that energy from the gravitational field is going to go into three different ca uh, containers. And one of them is some of the energy is just going to stay in the gravitational field because it's still not at its lowest point yet. Um, and now at point B, it's also moving. So some of the energy is going to be stored in the box itself, in kinetic energy. And now think about the last container in this case. Well, one thing we need to pay attention to is it says this is a rough ramp and that the box stopped at the bottom. And so that means we're going to add in, well, one more container, which is the environment storing 
heat energy. And then the very last thing is, well, we'll draw these all going to the end and think about what kind of energy there is at the end. Well, we're at our lowest point, so there's no gravitational anymore. It's not moving because it's stopped. There's no kinetic anymore, which means that all of the energy has gone into heat energy in the environment. And so we can kind of follow the path that the energy takes, how it moves from one container to another using these diagrams. We'll go through another example here for you as well. In the second example, a person lifts a ball, then drops it. And we're going to draw the same thing for when it starts on the ground, when it's up in the air, and just before it hits the ground. <coughs> All right, so you might not be sure about what to do with part A, so we're going to actually start in part B for this one, just because for our first example, I'm just going to tell you through this way. So I think at part B, we can all agree where the energy is. It's going to be in gravitational potential energy in the gravitational field. And so it must have come from somewhere. And where did it come from? It came from the person who lifted it up. And so the person who lifted it up, that's where the energy started. And so I'd say here the lifter and that the energy was a form of work. And so the lifter did work on the object and that energy got added into the gravitational field of from the effect of the ball being lifted upwards. And then as we continue on, well, now the ball is falling down to the ground and at point C, it's just before it hits the ground. So at that point, we would assume the height is basically zero, maybe like the width of a human hair, but we're not gonna include that small amount of gravitational potential energy. We would say that at the end, it's all kinetic energy in the ball. And so this is a simpler flow diagram, but uh, it still shows us the path that the energy takes throughout the object. Does that, hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, we're going to get some practice with doing these right after you finish this video, which has one more concept that we're going to talk about, which is rather than energy flow diagrams, we will also sometimes see what we call energy bar charts. And so you may have used bar charts in the past, and we don't typically use them that much um, in high school science classes, but we're going to use them for energy to show where the energy goes the same sort of way. But this also tells you about the amount of different kinds of energy in each of the containers. And we'll draw bars for the containers and make the bars change height to show the flow of energy. And so we'll show those same two examples again, but this time from the perspective of, uh, well, I guess here's sort of an example one. And so we write the containers underneath and we, we put the uh, type of energy on the bar itself. And you'll see those when we get to the actual example. One thing too is we add in a total column for this. You can see that over there. Um, this is just to kind of keep track of that the total amount of energy stays the same throughout the, throughout the example. <laughs> All right, and so we'll do the same thing here. I won't draw the picture again because we've, uh, we've kind of seen that. And so we want at the top of the ramp, halfway down the ramp and when it's stopped at the bottom. So to begin with, I'll just draw this really fast. We've got our three different charts and I might need to move myself out of the way just here a little bit. Um, and so with these three different charts, we've got the total energy is the same throughout. We can show the arrows that it's going from one to the next to the next. And I've put in down in the bottom here, you can kind of see the G field box and the environment. Those are my three containers. So you kind of have to think through what are your containers for the entire situation and you label each of your graphs that way. And so what we'd say here is at the very top, we said it was all in the gravitational field. All of the energy was in the gravitational field. And so it's GPE in the gravitational field. And it was as it was sliding down the ramp, well, it's halfway down. So it's gonna have half of the energy in the gravitational field that it had before. And some of the energy is in kinetic energy and some of that energy was also lost to the environment through friction. And so we're gonna put in here that kinetic energy is a smaller bar and that the heat energy is a smaller bar as well. Now these, you don't really have to say exactly the, the values of this, but the main thing that's important is that as you look at all three of these, if you were to stack these bars on top of each other, they should add up to the total. The way I've drawn this, maybe they would be a little bit taller because I, I wasn't being 100%, like I didn't use a ruler as I was drawing this, but you generally want it to look like we add all the energy together, it should add up to the total energy. And then here at the end, all of the energy is in the environment, and so we just say, well, all of it's in Q in the environment. And so this is our way to show the flow of energy from one spot to another. You might prefer one of these methods to the other uh, or see it, have it help you a little more visually see what's going on. Um, but we'll draw both of these and we'll use both of them. So that's why, that's why we have them here. 
All right, then we'll do our last example. <clears throat> a person lifts a ball and then drops it. Same sort of thing, but this time we wanna do an energy bar chart. I guess it says an energy flow diagram, but I mean an energy bar chart for this one. And so we'll say, well, at the beginning, all of the energy is in the lifter. They have the energy it's work <coughs> that they're about to use. And then that energy that was in the person now goes into the gravitational field. And now I know that we wouldn't say that the lifter has no energy anymore, but we're talking about the energy that was used in this process. That's why all of the energy went from the lifter into the gravitational field. And then as the ball is dropped, it goes from the gravitational field into the ball in kinetic energy. And so this is sort of following the energy step by step from container to container and making sure that we understand what's going on with it. <coughs> all right. So the next thing we're going to do is you're going to get some practice going through some of these energy charts and flow diagrams on page 123 in your packet. And then uh, after you finish page 123, you can uh, move on to 124. Um, and these should both have solutions or answer guides that are posted in today's lesson as well. Once you're done with that, you can start working on some of the homework like the... Um, like the lab report if you haven't finished that with your group yet, or the, uh, the web assign that's on there that's doing a few classes from now if you already finished your lab report. I think most of the stuff on the web assign is stuff you should be able to do right now. But there might be a couple of the questions on there that we haven't learned yet. And so uh, since it's due three classes from now, um, you'll be able to learn some of that stuff if we haven't yet. So if there's some things on there that don't seem familiar, uh, then feel free to just skip those ones and come back to them later. So I wish you the best of luck. Come with questions next class. So if, there, if you have questions about stuff as you're learning it today uh, or going through it, please write them down so that we can make sure we get those uh, answered for you for next class. Good luck. See you soon.